Hello dear students, this is Oprakas, your English teacher from Makanyanika Public School, Petra Road. Welcome you to my English class. Students, today I have taken the very first chapter, The Portrait of a Lady from class 11th Arnville textbook. So today these are some of the points that we are going to discuss from this chapter. First we will discuss about some keywords, then we are going to discuss about the theme, then the characters and finally we will summarize the chapter. So please be with me and try to understand these all the words which are very important for you all to enrich your vocabulary. So the first word is portrait. As it is written here in itself in the title of the chapter, the portrait of a lady. What do you mean by portrait? Portrait is actually a true picture or you can say a painting or an accurate depiction of a person. That is what a portrait is. Now the mantelpiece. What is mantelpiece? A self above a fireplace. Any of the self which is made over a fireplace, above a fireplace is known as mantelpiece. Now the absurd. What is absurd? Absurd means something which is ridiculous or foolish is known as absurd. Now the hobbled. What is hobbled? Walked with difficulty. If somebody is walking with difficulty, can we say she hobbled? Okay. Now this hobbled word is used actually for the grandmother of the author. So a stoop. Stoop means bent body due to old days. This word is also used for the grandmother. Telling the beats. What do you mean by telling the beats? Beats, counting the beats while chanting the praise. As you know, here the author's grandmother was very kind and uh, uh, devotional lady. So here, this telling the beats is actually used for the counting the beats while chanting the prayer. Telling the beats, which means counting the beats while chanting the prayers. Now, puckered. Puckered means wrinkled. Puckled means wrinkled. What are wrinkled? Then there is a, some lines on the faces. Okay. The body is shrink. That is what called wrinkled. Serenity. That is calm and peaceful. Which means calm and peaceful. Monotonous. If someone is monotonous, that can be said as a some low mode or sad mode. That can you, you can also say an unchanging fellow. Bedlam. Bedlam means confusion. Okay. Dilapidated. Dilapidated means falling to pieces. If something which cannot be repaired, that is what? Falling to pieces. That is dilapidated. Okay. The worst condition. Pallor. Pallor means pale coloring of the face. What do you mean by pallor? Pale coloring of the face. So generally this pallor word is used for the face index. Okay. So these are some of the important words meaning. I think you should learn and you should enrich your vocabulary through these words. Now we will discuss about the theme. So this story depicts the bond of the family relationship between a grandmother and her son. The grandson author lives with his grandmother in their village house. The portrait of a lady is a part of an autobiography by Khushwan Singh, where the author draws a pen portrait of his grandmother. This story is a loving tribute from a grandson to his grandmother. The story is a picture of a human relationships. It is a realistic account of how the grand Parents give all their time, attention, care, love to their grandchildren. Now, let's discuss about the characters of this chapter. So, in this story, there are two main characters. The first is a grandmother and the second one is a Kushman Singh, the author of the chapter. If we discuss about grandmother, how she is, she is an extremely religious lady. Very kind, very supportive, very religious. How does she look? She looks fat, short and slightly bent. That tells about her age. When we discuss about the Kushwan Singh, the author, he recounts actually in this chapter his childhood days and his relationship with his grandmother. So this is all about the theme and the characters of this chapter. Now let's summarize this chapter through these basic key points. First we will discuss life and villages. Here in this chapter, the author resides with his grandmother, the one who has become old. His parents have moved to the city. So in this case, he is totally under the guardianship of his grandmother. She has grown old and wrinkly, though she takes care of him very nicely. 
author studies in a school attached to a temple. So whenever author goes to the temple, here the grandmother escorts him and engages herself in devotional activities. And when he finishes his study, the grandmother comes with his grandson, feeding stray dogs along with their journey. Now let's discuss the second phase, change in lifestyle. When they have relocated to the city house, their daily routine is completely disrupted. Why? Because though they are sharing the same room, they grow apart gradually as author is studying and has been enrolled in an English medium school. So there he studies maths, science in place of spiritual things. That is not liked at all by his grandmother. He also starts taking interest in music that even is not like a grandmother. So she fills her time in spiritual endeavors and tending to the sparrows that visit their city house. So in this way, their lifestyle has completely changed in the second phase. The third phase is growing separation. Why? As author has to go to university for his further study. So in this way, he requires a separate room for his study and his independence. So this alienates the two further. Finally, the author moves abroad for higher studies. This is the time when that comes when they both are going to be separated. And that's what, what happens here. Finally, when the author is going, to, uh, going abroad and pl planning, the grandmother goes to see him off to the railway station and they say their warm goodbyes to each other. The next phase is author's return from abroad. So what happens here, when he is going to return, at that moment, the grandmother is very happy. When the author returns home after five years, he is pleasantly surprised to see his grandmother as one, the one who is planning to lead the welcoming party for his return. Back at home, she keeps busy with her sparrows, but arranges the celebratory function for the returning of the author. She partakes in festive songs and dances as well to rejoice the return of her grandson. So here, the final phase is grandmother's death. When the author has returned, recently the grandmother has celebrated a lot, but finally what happens? The very next day, the festivities do not last long. As the very next day, the grandmother falls sick. She asks to be left alone at that moment and devotes herself to the prayer and appreciation of God. Suddenly, the rosary drops to the floor as a soul departs to the heaven. Okay, she is no more there to celebrate that festivities any longer. And finally, when the grandmother is no more, the funeral is arranged and has some special guests in the form of her beloved sparrows. As the grandmother used to feed the sparrows, that's what the sparrows are there in the form of guest here. As the body of the grandmother leaves the house, so do the sparrows. And that's all is here in this chapter. Hope you understood the chapter. And please go through this uh, properly so that you could understand the concept, the words meaning, the theme of the chapter. And I'm sure it's going to be very helpful for you all. Thank you so much.